made up of many different components. Lines, shapes, spaces, and one more. What was it? Let me think. Oh yes, color. The way color is used in art affects us a great deal. It is possible to create art using just black and white. In fact, some art forms, like pencil drawings, are limited to black and white. But when colors are used, the choice of which are used and how they are used is very important. Take the reds, for example. Whew. Is anyone else warm in here? The reds are called warm colors. They give a painting a sense of heat. Don't you think of reds and oranges when you think of fire? The blues and purples are cool colors. Whew. Did you just get a chill? There, that's better. Obviously, when painting landscapes or anything realistic, color plays a large role. But in abstract art, the choice and use of color is even more important. Some artists, such as Paul Jenkins, use color and shape alone in their art. This painting, Phenomena Heat of High, hangs in the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown, Ohio. Notice the use of colors and how the lines are arranged. Jenkins uses different kinds of paint, acrylic, oils, and watercolors. He spills them onto the canvas and then tilts the canvas. He guides the flow of paint in this way, leaving behind a path of color which form the lines of his art. Betty Elliott of Canton, Ohio uses the same techniques as Jenkins in her watercolors. She swirls the paint on with a squeeze bottle and then uses a brush to spread it. She tilts the paper and the colors blend into white areas or blend with another color. If she does add identifiable objects to her paintings, they are determined by the colors that are already there. I'm a painter. Uh, most of my painting is done uh, with three major colors, red, red, yellow, and blue. Sometimes I'll have uh, four or five paintings going all at the same time. And they, while this one is drying, I'm working on another one. Uh, if that gets to a point where I want to leave it and work on another one, I let it dry and I keep doing that and then come back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I don't know how many of these things will turn out to be good paintings. We don't know. Uh, a lot of it will be thrown away, be torn up and used in, as uh, collages in other paintings. But this is how we start. And this is what we're after. Texture, the play of color, and the play of your mind against what we have done. As a painter, I started out, like most painters do, as a realist. But I got to the point where suddenly that was no longer satisfying me. And I began to look for other ways to apply paint and think about uh, more ways that I can use paint to express with. Now here we're pouring paint on and what I have found about this way of painting is that the paint itself does things. I have no um, way of knowing exactly what this paint's going to do. And that is what is fascinating about it. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this when I first start. We'll see. Uh, what develops, and then I let that speak to me and tell me uh, some of the things that I respond to. I think one of the things you have to decide about painting, you have to find out what your passions are. 
for instance, I am not particularly interested in painting portraits. Never have been. One of the things I am passionate about is color. I love color. I like to watch what color will do and how it will mix and how it will flow. Um, acrylics have some wonderful, wonderful attributes. Number one, When they dry, you can paint over them without disturbing the underpainting. Yet they still have that same fluidity that transparent watercolor has. They take to glazing, that is painting one color over another, very well. Unlike oil, You don't have to wait for them to dry because in, in glazing, the undercoat has to be dry. A little finger painting doesn't hurt. At this point, I don't really know what's going on here. But I like some of the movement involved and I like the feeling of strong, cool colors versus the strong, warm colors. And I probably will put this down someplace and let it dry uh, and then decide where I'm going to go with it. Crenshaw Middle School spent some time playing with colors and seeing what kind of effects they could get just by using it. They let the paints and the colors flow freely. In other words, it's a pretty awesome uh, job uh, that you take a, 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 a piece of white paper you know, a, 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 and paint. Now, all of you are going to have your own individual watercolor sets at your table. We have acrylics here later. I think I'd like to start working with the, uh, the watercolor first, though. So the thing you're doing here is not actually just kind of uh, making a mess on a piece of paper. You know, you're actually thinking that of what you're doing. Painting is thinking. when you really water down your paints a lot. And feel free to use this too. This is your palette. You can use this for mixing. You know, if you put your paint in here, add a lot of water to it, it's going to be very pale, very transparent. That's the wash. When you tilt the paper, the paint is going to run. And so therefore, that you're going to have to be able to control how much it runs, where it runs, what it runs into. What do you do next? In primary colors, you're familiar with primary colors, right? OK. So let's just try to stay within the boundaries here. So I have the blow dryer set up in the back of the room. because You're not really going to be able to have a hard edge if you paint on top of wet paper, because you're going to have a lot of that bleeding. So if you want to take that back and use the blow dryer and go over it, then you'll be able to come back and start to work with your hard edges so you can contrast. That brush is just a tool. You know, basically, everything starts up here. If you plan to have a hard white area here or a hard white area in here, paint everything else with water except for those areas. And if you decide to do a flooding or a wash here, your colors will spread in that white area and they'll stop. want to watch the water as it pools up there. Okay. 
now because what's going to happen here? It's going to dry darker here. Okay? You want this type of effect, and you've got to go back in there and take that water out of there. Okay? By just drying your brush, or even a sponge if you want. You can do some sponge work there. Yeah, well, in order to have contrast, which contrast basically means difference, we want to have maybe a stronger difference between some of these light areas. And this is pretty dark here, and it's pretty dark here. But you can be, yeah, but you can be even more bold. This would be a good time for you to add some salt to that. Okay? And get that kind of dispersal thing. You can have the same color. You can do a painting in one color, a monochromatic painting, and show uh, very, very pale colors, very deep colors. If you have a whole range of those colors, you're going to have different um, degrees of value. Like I said, lightness and darkness. So when you're using paints on your paper, you can use them bright. You can use them full force with a lot of intensity. And you can also make them very pale. These are thoughts that should be going through your mind. What can I do to this to, uh, to add to this? What are my possibilities? Okay, it's like a game plan, okay? okay? Do I cut this? Do I add to something else? Do I take the tape off? Do I leave it on? Do I take part of it off? Do I paint on the tape? I mean, there are a million things. That there, there are a million choices you have. What can you do that you have that many choices for success? Nothing. You know? Nothing. It's like a writer does with his pen or typewriter or computer. Okay? You're trying to evoke a feeling. You're trying to make someone look at this and say, Wow! Look at that color. Look at that. You know? Gorgeous. How did he do that? And that's what you're trying to, trying to convey. Now, the other part of painting that you might want to think about, knowing when to stop knowing when a painting is done. Remember coloring books? The lines were there and it was up to you to fill in the colors. Some artists begin this way. Using a pen or a pencil, they sketch and design in black and white. The colors are added later. But other artists begin with the colors. It's the colors that decide what the painting will be. The colors provide the initial sketch. The first thing to learn about art is this. Art has few boundaries. Art is an expression of thoughts, feelings, and ideas. And for some artists, that means a coloring book with no black lines. Teaching materials for sharing art are available on the web at wneo.org slash sharing art. Funding for this series was provided by the Martha Holden Jennings Foundation and Northeastern Ohio Education Association. NAOEA's members include elementary and secondary teachers, university professors, and support professionals proudly serving students attending the public schools and colleges of Northeastern Ohio.